Happy Wednesday, April 20th from North Central Nebraska. It is sunny, a little breezy again, but not as windy as we were yesterday. This has just been a spring for insane wind and uh, it's it's even got the cow guys kind of complaining. <laughs> And they usually don't complain too much about the wind. But uh, getting a lot of questions here um, about planting and all the things that entail that, seeding depth, um, what kind of what kind of things do we need to consider with the equipment as we head into these really dry conditions. Definitely about the driest that I've seen, especially our subsoil moisture up here. Um, we're blessed in this part of the world that we do normally through the winter time get subsoil moisture replenishment. And then, you know, the last few years we've measured our total feet, our total snow in feet. This year, I think we've had, if we've had six inches total from December through now, I would be surprised. The last report that I seen through the end of March in the newspaper was a total of a half inch for the year in Bassett, where where I'm at. Um, and that's that has a lot of people really, really nervous. The the ranchers, of course, with grass, there our grass is really slow coming and has has guys worried on that part and the farming side the you know the row crop we are getting into to here towards the end of the week is when some of the the early guys get going and had questions last week as well as now popping up again today we've since we've missed another chance of rain on what we need to be doing with the planters and setting things up Last week, my associate and I went out and helped an operation with their planters and just kind of came up with a game plan of what we need to be thinking about. Their biggest concern was on the agronomic side. You know, how deep can we go with corn and beans or how shallow can we go and, and still get a good stand when it comes time for harvest particularly. And, um, you know... <laughs> Check, check your, your seed guides, talk to your, your seed people on their recommendations specifically to their hybrids. Seedling Vigor is going to play a huge part this year and we don't want to go, we know we have to find moisture, but we don't want to go too deep. If we do have the, the added blessing in a, in a big portion of this area to where we can go out and start a pivot which kind of sucks when we're still getting down to 30 degrees at night, but with any kind of luck, we can, we can get past a cold spell like that for nighttime temperatures. But, um, you know, in Brown County, west of me specifically, we run things off of uh, a canal system from Merritt Reservoir south of Valentine. And those, the water district, irrigation district guys are trying to get water going to where they can bring some water down earlier in May than they normally do. But that's tricky because I've heard from a couple of people that not only are they trying to up their normal repair and prep schedule, but all of this wind has pushed so much trash into canals and culverts that they have the um, the added struggle of cleaning all that stuff out and getting ready for water to come down. But if you do have the blessing, uh, the blessing of a pivot that you can go out and start your well and get it going, a little pre-water might not be a bad thing. Uh, definitely don't be sitting back on and having that on the back burner for getting your pivots prepped in that that side of things. Um, for, for specific planting, like I said, go back to your hybrid vigor and, and depth is going to be key this year. If you don't have moisture until you get down past two inches, depending on your hybrid, totally depending on your hybrid and your soil type, I am not totally opposed to three inch planted corn. I've seen it planted to three and four inches, particularly in a cover crop, and it came up. It, it was planted later so that's like that's something I want you to consider is that if you have to go deep what is your seedling vigor what kind of soil and can you wait a week so that we know we have consistent soil temperatures or hopefully stacking things up for a consistent soil temperature to where then that plant has a solid straight shot to come out of the ground uh, corn plant um, that's critical 
if soil temperatures are going to fluctuate over the next, particularly in that first seven to 10 days that you plant, not only is uh, cold in inhibition, cold inhibition, I think is what they call it. I can never remember that word, but that can affect germ on the seed, that first initial 24 to 48 hour temperature of the moisture that they pull in is affected, and then growth after that. So say it germinated in good temperatures, but then we hit three days of cold, and maybe we get a shot of rain and, and we push that cold moisture down. As that corn plant is coming up, it will turn sideways to stay and find warm, stay in and find warm soil. And then when things warm back up, it'll, it'll go. So it will kink if it has to. If it stays too long, it can start unwhirling underground and, and corkscrewing, they call it, is a, another thing that the radical and the, uh, the radical, radical is the root, radical is the root and the coleoptile of the, the corn plant coming up. So be, be conscious of that. Um, like I said, have those conversations with your seed people on seedling vigor and emergent scores and all that kind of stuff. If you have to delay a hybrid because it has a, a poor emergent score, do it. It'll still be fine. I promise it'll still be fine if it's not planted in the exact time frame that you want to get it planted. If it screws up planting plans, I know it's an inconvenience and it kind of sucks, but with the commodity prices that we've got in your input costs, everything needs to be set up perfect at planting to maximize and the potential that you have out of those kernels of corn. So just, just don't screw it up. Soybeans, on the other hand, years ago I had a guy tell me if you planted soybeans, they wouldn't grow. Um, he was being a little facetious, of course, <laughs> but he's not totally wrong. Beans and how their growth is, so those, those seeds um, become your cotyledons when they come out of the ground. Those are your, your first true solar panels that you get that, that contribute energy and food to the, the plant and the root system for it to grow. So that germinates and that plant has to pull those cotyledons out of the ground. It's not just a straight shot. So, um, you know, this is where dry conditions, if we were wet and then turned dry, you get that crusting effect can be a real issue. They'll snap their necks when they're trying to come up. I don't think we're gonna have that kind of problem this year. It's going to be, if you plant too deep to find moisture for them to germinate, to um, then for them to come out. So, you know, beans don't go three inches deep on beans. Please don't. Uh, two, two and a half is kind of my personal max. Again, seedling vigor, check your emergent scores and what kind of soil are you going into plays a huge factor. What kind of trash do you have to come through plays a huge factor in that. Each field is so different and so specific. You got to check this stuff every time you pull into a new field and, and adjust things. Do not be afraid. 10, 15 minutes to start out on the field is better than getting halfway done and realizing that you have a problem. So uh, call your seed person, call your agronomist, call me if, if you're local and my so associate and I will come out and we will help you. We, we can, let's screw up a hundred foot, not a hundred acres um, with, with planting depth and, and all that kind of stuff. So that's just kind of my quick thing on that. Um, you know, of course, check your salt out on your fertilizer. If it's supposed to get cold in a heated shop uh, is where you got to go. If it's going to be cold, then again, wait a few days because if it's that cold at night to dip and down, your soil temperatures are dipping down. I'm going to head out right now. I'm down south of Bassett in uh, more central Rock County pulling, going to be checking some, some soil temperatures. I'm, I'm in a soybean stubble with a planted cover crop right now. I'm going to go find some corn stubble and then go check out some alfalfa in case we've got some bugs coming. But that is my quick run through of things to consider as we go into this exceptionally dry spring here in North Central Nebraska. And, um, you know, and looking at stuff on, on Twitter, social media, there's parts of the country that are sopping wet. So can we meet halfway with some of your water and some of our dryness? And <laughs> uh, if only it worked like that, but I hope everybody has a blessed spring. 
holler with questions, of course. If you know how to get a hold of me, I do have, uh, I'm on Twitter, at Yield B, my um, Facebook, Yield Plus Agronomics, LLC, on for Facebook page. And um, yeah, I hope you have a good one. Thanks for tuning in. Take care.